So moving right along now, um, we're gonna we're gonna break this thing down semi manually. Um, the the downside of now doing this uh, reversion to triangulation, right? Because you haven't designed it to be triangulated. You're sort of just modifying it to map triangles. Um, is we have to use our quadrilateral points, right? Our, our four corners of this panel, and we're gonna isolate them and start to map the triangle to them. Okay, so um, the way that that's gonna look is, well, essentially, I, I like to try and work backwards. So let's go up to surface and freeform, and, and I'm gonna quickly just kind of simulate um, what it would be like for you trying to figure out how to do it. So. Um, you do have a couple of different ways of creating um, surfaces here. So if you just read what the options are, it kind of leads you to what you can do. So this is a four point surface and it says create a surface connecting three or four corner points. That's a possibility. Um, surface from points. So it creates a NURBS surface from a grid of points. And then um, boundary surfaces, probably not, because it says that it needs a collection of boundary edge curves, which we may or may not have. Um, and uh, potentially, I don't know if some surface would work. I don't think that would work. Um, but in, if we were doing it in, say, Rhino, you can loft two, uh, you can loft two curves that converge at a point together to get a triangle, I think. I haven't done that actually. Let me try that real fast. I don't want to lie to you here, but I think theoretically you can. If you loft these two together, you get a triangle. So we can try that, which is a possibility. So I'm going to sort of, now I'm in exploratory mode, right? I know that I have some options of doing this and I want to find a way to do it that's going to be efficient. So um, let's try using the four point surface, even though it's called four point surface, it says you can do three points only. So I'll try that. And I'm also going to try loft. Which might actually need, yeah, well, hey, we'll try these. So um, they're both under surface and freeform. So which one would you like to try first? Shout it out, I'm going with the first suggestion. Loft. Loft, okay, we're gonna start off with loft. Um, so loft is asking me for section curves. Okay, so basically what I have to do is isolate the two curves, right? So basically the two edges that converge at a point and then uh, make sure that they're in one list because that's how a loft operates. I don't know if ruled surface will work in two separate lists. We could try it, but it might not be necessary. So anyway, um, what I have to do is isolate uh, those edges. So uh, let me go back to perspective here so we can see what's going on a little better. <clears throat> so um, we could theoretically still use the edges here. Can we? Yeah, we can. Can't. Can't. No, no, we can't. Sorry. We can't because these are curved. Right? The top ones are curved and we don't want that. Does that make sense? Did I just confuse you by asking myself questions? So anyway, we want to use this one and deconstruct this one because the loft or the ruled surface that I blended between those two curves created straight edges at the top corner. So that's gonna give me a true triangle. Okay, that's important to know. So um, I'll go to deconstruct BREP on these surfaces, and I can turn all this off. And deconstruct BREP then is where I'm gonna get my edges. I need to just be very careful about which edges I'm isolating, and I isolate them using essentially the same list item that I have here, zero to three. There are four edges, I just need to figure out which ones I need. So I'll copy and paste, and I'll plug these edges in instead.
So I'll turn that back on, hold this, and what I have here is the uh, left edge of the panel yet again. Okay, um, and the adjacent edge is either the bottom, which is number one. See, now the bottom is number one, and number two is on the right, and number three is at the top. So if I just start from zero and one, those two are adjacent to one another, and I can isolate both of those. So let me just pose a question to you before I actually do anything. How do I get them in one list? Does anyone know? Have a thought? A jumping off point? A first contact? A notion? That's all right. Okay. You guys will have more notions as you learn more. So anyway, um, we can do that by not duplicating this item, right? So we just put two different numerical inputs into the item, which is going to allow us to filter them into packages of two. So these sets of two curves for every single one of the panel subdivisions. Um, and that essentially looks like this. But let me put a um, panel on here so that we can see what the data output looks like. So when it has one number attached to it, it has one line-like curve in every single set, or branch, if you're thinking about it in terms of the tree, right? Um, the data tree. If I copy this and I put it back to number zero, and I add it, hold shift, and it'll add two curves to that list. So now when you highlight this, you'll see you can't really see it very well on screen here, but if you're following along in step with me, you see the left edge and the bottom edge get filtered into that one list. Are any of you confused by that? It's okay if you are. Let me know. No? Okay. So, um, because they are grouped up in pairs of two, that means that I can feed it into... Uh, the curves input, which says section curves, plural. So I'll plug this in to see. Uh, looks like it's acting funny on me. I'll turn this off. Oh, that's weird. Loft options. Let's see. Um, that's unexpected. So... Um, the, the loft options, I guess this is a good opportunity for an aside, sort of. Um, the loft options down here doesn't really give you any information about how to change it, okay? So be aware that some of these tools are sort of preloaded with settings that you would otherwise see in Rhino, okay? So remember, when I did the loft over here, I don't know if it'll allow me to do it without curves, Load it. Loft. Okay, so see how it has this menu here in Rhino? Um, so in here, the loft options sort of has some of those functions built into it. So if you right click it, where you would normally go to like flatten and graft and stuff like that, there's this uh, section here that's called loft options. So this will allow us to play around with the settings for that loft to see if we can get a more desirable result. Okay, so I'm going to try to do that now because um, that definitely didn't look like what I expected it to look like. So um, the difference with these things here is that you have to actually click this checkbox to commit the changes. So I'll um, turn on closed loft and I'll commit those changes and I'll see what that error is that it's telling me. Loft failed. Don't know why. Okay. Thanks. Um, loft options, let's turn that off. Let's go to align sections. I don't know what that's going to do for me. That's a new tool to me. All right, so align sections isn't doing it. So let's try um, some of these options here, which are sort of your primary settings for lofts. Oh, sorry, that's kind of a little low for you. Um, there we go. Loft options. So um, under normal, actually, 
that one might be it. So under normal, uh, we can switch that to different settings. So let's try loose is not it. I don't know what these settings do really. I don't use these loft options very much. So I'm kind of just running down the line here to see if I can get it to do what I want it to do. Turn off the line sections. Thought I'd turn that off. Straight. I thought straight would do it. Developable. There we go. Oh, look at that. One of them wouldn't do it. That is mega weird. Wow. What's wrong with those? They're all line-like curves. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't really know what the proper refit. Okay. So refit and developable seems to do it. Although I don't know if we really need developable now. No, we do. Okay. All right. So that seems to do it for us. Um, go into loft options, make sure that it is set to developable and to refit. Okay. So that seems to work for us right now. Will that always work? Maybe, maybe not. These are not settings that I'm particularly super familiar with. Um, so that should, yeah. The corner should be accurate enough. Okay, um, are there any questions on that right now? No? Okay. So um, basically the other thing that we have to do to just close the triangulation all out here is essentially to um, grab the other two edges and do the same thing. So I can copy the loft, I can copy the list item, and I can copy the two index values um, sliders and just copy it all down like this. And here, instead of one and zero, I'm gonna use two and three. So I'll just move this up to three, and I'll move this up to two, and there you have it, a triangulated surface. So this is a good angle to see it because you can actually see the, uh, the sunlight a little bit. The shading. Any questions? No, you guys have very few questions today. Yes. Okay, I'll come check it out.